everybody, this is Erica the Technology Nerd likes to film stuff and today is not such a fun video day for Erica. I've had a chance to distance myself for a few days from this event, but basically my Moto G has met a very sad demise and I want to talk about it with you all today because a lot of you have seen my video where I put the Moto G under water for 30 minutes and it survived unscathed just fine and that's something that really impressed me and has made this device one of my favorite little devices so far. But the one thing that I don't want people to do is to go out and to get a Moto G and to think that they can just abuse it. Just throw it in any liquid that they want to. Because I got into a little bit of mischief this past week with the Moto G and decided to see what else it could withstand besides water, so I put it into a bowl of soup. Yeah, that's right, you heard me. A bowl of soup. And I was actually fairly confident. Because what I know about the Moto G is it has a liquid repellent or water repellent nano coating that protects all the components inside the device from being damaged by any liquid. So basically the process goes like this. You have Motorola, they make the device, it's already made, assembled, and looks just like this. They hand it over to a company that's called P2i, and P2i takes the Moto Gs and they put them inside of a vacuum chamber. All of the air is sucked out, it's at room temperature, and then they introduce a vapor that's also ionized. Now this ionized vapor goes inside of the device and covers all of the components with a covalent bond. So not only is this layer very, very, very thin, about a thousandth of the width of a human hair, you also can't see it, you can't feel it. And it's very, very durable at the same time, so it's not gonna wear off easily. So in their videos, I see how coffee is being spilt on it. I see people bringing their devices out in the rain. And they talk about various other liquids that should not be able to interact with any of the electrical components causing any short circuiting. So of course, seeing that, I was very, very curious and I had to test the limitations of this. Now I tell you, this thing here cannot survive a bowl of soup. Don't do it. In theory, it should be able to, but these devices are not perfect. I'm going to do a take apart video, as I promised you all, to show you how the Moto G ticks. You can see some of the electrical components. So let's go and check out all those happenings, shall we? So here we've got the Moto G inside a glass of water, and now we're going to see what else it can withstand. Okay, so go ahead. So it does just fine 30 minutes in water, right? So let's see if it can actually withstand other things such as a hot bowl of fuss. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thanks for that. Just oh yeah. <laughs> give, it, give it a nice stir. <laughs> yeah, that works. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> see, he's the one that encourages me to do such things. Ew. That's a carrot. Oh. Okay, so I guess we're gonna take the phone out. Oh my gosh. Should I just put my hand in it? Is it hot? No, it's all right. Oh, gross. Oh, there's <laughs> chicken on it. <laughs> Yummy. Ew. Okay. Is it okay? Is it okay? Yeah. I had this one. Uh, not usual. <laughs> With the accent, the water was perfect. The gas of water test to remove all the soup. <laughs> Yeah, we have uh, attracted interest sticking this uh, Moto G in, in water. We're going to have to take the back cover off. Uh, I'm going to cut it for a second. I'll show you guys the results. This is what my crazy family does for fun. Okay, so as you can see, it's off. <laughs> yeah, the screen turns on. That's a plus. You can see that the battery is at 0%. Well, let's give it a minute and uh, we'll have it turn back on. Look at this. It's turning on now. Powering up. <laughs> and you can see there you are. Oh, wow, the screen's really greasy. You can't even make contact. <laughs> yeah, your finger is better than hers. Oh, that's interesting. Too greasy? It's really, really greasy on this display. Let's give, let's give it a second and see if it'll come back. Okay, so the touch screen stopped working on the phone. I can show you. So we're going to see if we can repair this with 70% rub. Shouldn't it be 99% isopropyl? We don't know what impurities are in that. Whatever. Let's just see if we can uh, try to get whatever is on the touch 
screen cable. Oh, that's going to smell. It's a good thing we're ventilated outside. I'm just going to leave that in there for a few minutes. See if we can uh, recover that touch screen. The thing is, in that soup there were a bunch of impurities. Salt is the main thing that's going to cause a problem here in shorting out our touch screen. So let's see what we can do here. Now, isopropyl alcohol isn't going to hurt it. If anything, it's going to help remove the impurities. So now we've got some distilled water, which also doesn't have any impurities in it. So we're going to do a second wash. We're going to do one more wash here. You can see the phone's on right now. I couldn't get it to turn off because the touch screen's off and holding it down and turning it off just restarts the phone, unfortunately. Touch screen. No touch screen. Yeah, we're gonna let it dry it out a bit and see what the result is. Hang tight. So here we are several days later after doing some diagnostics and seeing that the touch screen is not working anymore. The digitizer or the touch sensitive layer is just no longer being recognized. So that was something that I was able to confirm. That is a big bummer. I'm just going to have it restart right now. You can see what it looks like. You can see that there's a bunch of water underneath the display. There wasn't water underneath the display initially. This is actually because I took the phone apart and used isopropyl again and distilled water again to try to see if I could get any impurities away. And still, no, it's not working. So indeed, as I had seen, the touchscreen is just not being recognized anymore. So my only option would be to replace this entire touchscreen assembly. I'm going to take this apart so you can see just what I'm talking about. So now we're going to have some fun taking it apart. I've become an expert at this already. As I tried my best to revive this little phone, I feel so horrible. So we've got a Torx screwdriver here. You can see that it looks like a star. So this is not just any normal screwdriver. So I'm going to have to just undo all of these screws. All of them are exactly the same size and shape and length. So I'm just going to finish that up. Now I've gotten all these screws off and before I take it apart, I do want to mention that I did pop a SIM in it just now. And sorry the display is dim because there's water underneath it, but you can see that it's definitely getting a 3G signal, no problem. I'm still able to get Wi-Fi reception. I did do a full restore because I ended up not only unlocking the bootloader but rooting it and really doing some diagnostics to see what looked like it had failed. And to me, the only thing that looks like it really had failed is the touch screen. All the buttons are still working properly. I was still hearing notifications through the speaker nice and loud. And I've also been able to charge the device without any problem whatsoever. So it really sucks that the touch screen had to be the thing that failed. So opening it on up, it's only held together by a couple of clips. It's very easy to take apart. I don't even need a pry tool of any sort. Just easily go around the phone. And it pops right up. Now you just need to be careful for these buttons that we have here as they're easy to lose. Looking underneath the back cover here, we have the main speaker. We've also got some contacts right here for the headphone jack. This is the single LED flash. And we've got some contacts here that make contact with the main board. That's what powers this. We've got a little microphone gasket right here. This is for the microphone on the top. So that's really all we're seeing underneath the back cover here. And here we have everything else. You can see that the battery is just sitting here. It's only held in by a double-sided adhesive tape. And here's our connector on the board. So here's the microphone that the gasket was covering. You can see the contacts on the board here for the headphone jack. We've got our 5 megapixel camera. We've got the vibrating module. We've got the 1.3 megapixel front facing camera. This is very easy to remove. Flick upward and we can just easily lift it out. Pull the ribbon cable out, and there you are. 
Now you can see at the bottom is the micro USB port. We're gonna go ahead and unconnect this connector. I could just easily do it with my nail. And there's a tab right here underneath to pull, to pull the battery upward. But for me, it was just easy to take a pry tool and go underneath to break the adhesive, wedging it inward. But it's not very difficult to remove at all. That's, that's really all it is. So while I don't call this battery user replaceable, if you have a little bit of knowledge about what you're doing, you're not going to cause any problem whatsoever. This is very easy to replace. This phone doesn't have very many structural components, you know, screws and the like. There seems to be a bit of tape and some rubber pieces. You can see that this is covering the ribbon cables. We have one for the LCD. And this is the touchscreen controller. We've got this little chip here. And this right here underneath this connector, I think this is where the problem had lied. I think this is what eventually short-circuited. And I think that this was a weak point. Here we have a bit of capped on tape. And this capped on tape was simply just sitting on top of this connector like so. There was no capped on tape for the ribbon cable for the LCD though, curiously, I'm not sure why. And there was a bit of capped on tape for the camera. And we've also got a little bit of capped on tape right here on the board. Now capped on tape is used to insulate certain components. Just say that you are soldering another piece onto the board and you don't want to have any interference or you don't want something to short circuit. Capped on tape is really great for that. So clearly they wanted to protect this connector for some reason as well as this one and whatever this is as well. But I have to wonder though if it ended up causing some trouble because connectors are generally a weak point. When they put this inside of the chamber and it had this capped on tape piece right there on top of it, I have to wonder if it prevented the vapor from protecting this fully. So when I put it into a bowl of soup, the salts that were in the soup were able to interfere with this connector and make it short circuit. That would be my best guess as immediately as I turned the phone on, as soon as I took it out of the soup, the touchscreen was not working. It wasn't just something that failed sporadically afterwards, it was immediate. So as soon as I had a charge going into this phone, I turned on the phone, boom, bye-bye touchscreen. So those salts obviously somehow interfered with this connector here. Now P2i is working on a project to have coatings that are fully submersible Maybe they're able to solve the problem with the connectors being a weak point. So I'll be really curious to see that. So this is rated for splash proof. And they say that if anything gets into the phone, it should be protected as well. But for full submersion, I can clearly see that it's really able to go in and wreak some havoc. But anyway, we're going to continue taking this apart. So I'm just gonna flip up this clasp here. And we've also got that one for the Synaptics touchscreen controller there. This is only held in by some double-sided adhesive. And you can see that once I pull this out, that all of this here can't possibly have been protected by that vapor. So pulling this one out as well, you're left pretty much unprotected around this. So we're just gonna lift that upward. The main board comes out very easily. Again, everything is held in by double-sided adhesive. very careful we have a clip that's right underneath here so you should pull it out from right to left you can see this clip residing right here we've also got a piece of foam so this is the entire touch screen assembly that would need to be replaced behind this metal piece we've got the backlight then underneath that is the LCD and then the digitizer and then between that is the glass or the Gorilla Glass 3 so there's a lot going on in this one piece here. We've also got the receiver. We've got the contacts for the receiver that touched the board. So this piece is going to be actually pretty expensive. It sets you back about $90 if you get it on somewhere like eTradeSupply.com. But you have to make the choice between thinking that you will be able to repair the phone and pay about $100 and thinking that you won't be able to repair it and just paying the full $200 to get a brand new one as this is costing you half the price. So setting that aside, We've got a metal plate here. It seems to have some contacts, and you can see that these are what make contact between here and the board. Now, I'm not sure what that's used for because without this, it still turns on just fine. So that would be something else for me to look into, but that's interesting. There really are not many structural components here. 
So you've got the proximity sensor and the ambient light sensor. You can see this is where the five megapixel camera is held in. You've got the microphone right here. But look at that, everything else is just adhesive. So this really is everything that this phone is comprised of. And what really surprises me is that no water was really able to get into the device until it was being shaken violently back and forth. I did notice only a tad bit of water in there. But when I submerged it in water fully and had it sitting for a half hour, no water had gotten underneath the display. And now when I take this apart, I really don't understand how that was possible. Also, for that matter, when looking at the 5 megapixel camera, all we have right here is this little foam ring that's protecting water from getting into it. And that's really not going to cut it, so I'm wondering how water did not get into this part of the phone. Maybe that lies with the property of the nano coating as well, because not only does it protect components, but it lets water beat up and drip off. So it was being repelled well enough. But as it's quite clear, his liquid really did get all the way inside this phone, obviously, as it had a chance to short circuit. I really don't understand how water did not completely penetrate into the display that first time around when I put it in water. My advice to you would be, don't take this to deep depths then, and don't put it in water and shake it about, because it seems that water is more easily able to find its way into the phone. So if you end up getting water on it in the rain, or if you were to drop it into a puddle or drop coffee on it, it should be fine, and still I feel quite comfortable submerging it underneath fresh water. But as it stands now, I would not put it in anything else fully submerged. So do not fully submerge this in salt water. Do not fully submerge this in a pool. Do not fully submerge this in a bowl of soup. Because as they say, it does indeed protect the electrical components, but once you fully submerge things, everything may not be protected as I clearly was able to see. So I'm really excited for P2i to release their fully submersible product. That coating is supposed to protect everything when fully submerged. I'm curious how that's going to work. At this point, I'm really not sure, but I feel so sad. This is such a sad day. This is so sad. <sighs> I honestly wasn't going to even make this video. This was so sad to me. So now that you've seen my humiliation, I want to take a chance to thank my sponsors over at audible.com. If you don't know what Audible is, they are a leading online provider of audiobooks with over 150,000 downloadable titles from every genre that I can possibly think of, one of which that's become my very favorite is the self-help section. And trust me, this week I've needed a lot of self-help. So the book that I've been listening to on my new tablets, what I've decided to test it out on, it's called How to Stop Worrying and Start Living by Dale Carnegie. And one of the major principles that's really helped me this week move on from what's happened is looking at an event. For example, my Moto G just becoming shredded and not working anymore. In this case, I was supposed to make a really cool video. It was supposed to survive. I was supposed to be able to show you. It was supposed to be just awesomeness. And it just completely failed. So I had my little panic attack. I was not going to show you this video at all. I felt incredibly stupid, but then I really needed to look at it and think of the absolute worst thing that could possibly happen was, well, I could just get the part to repair it. I could get a whole new device. And if it could not get the device working, I could just come on camera and be honest with you about what happened. So thanks to that technique, it really gave me the chance to not completely freak out. So if you want to check out this book, or any other book of your choice, go to audible.com slash Erica. You can check it out for free. So you're free to download a book of your choice and to try out Audible service. So go to audible.com slash Erica. I think this book is really phenomenal. And I am just genuinely saying this from my heart. And if you don't like the book, Audible guarantees their book, so you can easily just go and exchange it for another one. So thank you, Audible Bunches, for the support. This has been very helpful this week. So thank you, everybody, for watching. This has been Erica, the technology nerd who likes to film stuff. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. I did not do this out of recklessness. You must know that. I just really thought that this would survive, and now I can see that there are indeed some limitations. So, <laughs> uh-huh. Au well. Good night.